Hello guys, Hobie here again. Uh, in this video, I want to discuss how I learned to do the pistol squat, how I moved from a normal squat and just slowly moving into the pistol squat. A few of you guys suggested I make a video on this for my quarantine strength workout video, where I added the pistol squat into my routine. I also got a lot of great comments from those two uh, quarantine videos, so thank you for that guys. I really appreciate it. I'm going to be making a lot more content, so stay tuned. Not just videos on athletics or vertical jumping, but also more videos on basketball and other related stuff. Just a bit of background for me, I'm currently studying math in a reputable university in Canada. And because of this, I'm planning to make some content on the analytics used in basketball. I'll still be making the same content on improving your vertical jump and more on athletics. So a bit of background on how I found about the pistol squat. I was watching a series of YouTube videos on lower body strength. And this was around two years ago. Uh, because of this, I gave it a try and with ugly form, I managed to pull off one pistol squat. My balance was all over the place. I think I was able to do it on my first try because at that time I was able to lift two times my body weight. Of course, lifting two times your body weight is not a requirement, but it definitely helps in the pistol squat. After realizing how difficult the pistol squats were, I decided to get better at it. I'm by no means a great pistol squatter at this point, but I'm able to rep it at around 10 reps and my form can get pretty inconsistent. All right, let's get on to the video. Firstly, what is a pistol squat? Some of you already know what it is, but pretty much a pistol squat is a squat with one leg counterbalanced using your other leg and your arms. Some have declared it one of the hardest body weight workouts to master, but I assure you it's not. But it is a great workout to get solid strength on your legs and some core strength. Not just that, since it isolates each of your legs, it's great for improving your balance. Mobility and flexibility of your ankles and hips is also a great benefactor. And a lot of the times, squats do not utilize some stabilizer muscles, whereas the pistol squats do. So overall, if you're an athlete, pistol squats will help you in balancing and coordination. And with the activation of some stabilizer muscles, it is essential that you incorporate this to your workout. All right, now on to the progression of the pistol squat. The first exercise is not really a progression, but a stretch to help regain mobility and flexibility. So right off the bat, the first stretch helps you regain uh, mobility and flexibility in your ankles. And we can do this by doing some calf stretches on an elevated step, such as a stair. By pushing your foot into the stair, you'll feel a slight stretch on your calves. But this is also a great stretch for your ankles as it forces you to be in a dorsiflex position. And I usually hold this position to 10 to 20 seconds and two to three reps on each side. I also add in some ankle rotation for mobility. The pistol squat requires a lot of mobility and flexibility in the ankles. So this is a great stretch for that. Next, we work on getting the hips to stretch so that it can be better activated during the pistol squat. During the low position of the pistol squat, it's crucial that the hips are flexible enough to keep the other leg straight and to keep it in balance. To do this, we do the forward lunge. Um, not only will it help your hips, but it will also help your ankle get into the dorsiflexion position, which is also part of the pistol squat. Now the next exercise isn't crucial in progressing the pistol squat, but I think it's an important warm up or accessory that's quite often forgotten. So the workout I like to add is the close stance squats because it activates the hips far better than a normal squat. Since it mimics the recruitment of the similar muscles in the pistol squat, I recommend adding this just before you do the pistol squats. Onto the first exercise that will progress us into the pistol squat is the rear elevated pistol squat. This is very similar to the lunge, but the main difference is the position of the rear leg, hence the name. The rear elevated pistol squat focuses more on the isolation of the quads, whereas the lunge tends to require more balance and coordination. You should be able to do 8 reps fairly easily in order to move on to the pistol squat. Right here I'm using a chair as a rear elevated position, but you can also use a stair or anything else. Many people also recommend doing the single leg knee squat after the rear elevated split squat. I don't think it's necessary, but if you find the next progression difficult, you can also try the single legged squat. The next progression after the rear elevated split squat is actually to start the pistol squats, but with the assistance of a band or some pole you can hold on to. In my case, I'm using a pillar in my basement, but anything you can hold on to assist you on your balance can help. 
I also found some boxing bandages to use as a hold when I slowly begin the pistol score. It's important that you go slowly in a controlled pace, so it's easier without uh, any assistance. The next progression is also a pistol squat variation, but the difference is that you do a pistol squat in an elevated position. Some of you may not need this progression, and it could be switched back and forth with the assisted pistol squat. The elevated pistol squat is an effective progression because you can outstretch your other leg by pointing it downwards. This allows you to use less of your hips, therefore making it easier to control your balance. For me in the beginning, I had trouble pointing my leg straight outwards, so this variation helped me work on the pistol squat without having to worry about my leg touching the floor. I recommend to getting to the point of doing 7 reps before moving to the next progression. The last progression is the weighted pistol squat. Now this might be counterintuitive because why would adding weights help you? Wouldn't it be more difficult? This is because the weight acts as a counterbalance to your pistol squat. It helps you add the forward lean and prevents you from falling backwards. If you can't do a pistol squat without the weight, you should progress by starting with a heavier weight and removing the weight every time you hit 8 reps with good form. As I mentioned throughout the video, uh, mobility in the ankles and the hips are really important. So if you find yourself falling backwards as you go down on a regular pistol squat, you should work on your mobility. Another possible weakness may be your core, so working on that will also help. To reiterate, if you find yourself having a hard time balancing when you're going down on a pistol squat, add weights so it can act as a counterbalance, and slowly progress by removing the weight until you can do it without them. Alright, that's it for the pistol squat progression. Hopefully by following some of these exercises, uh, it can help you get your first legit pistol squat, or maybe just get you to the next level. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, feel free to subscribe. I'll be making more content like this, so stay tuned. Thanks guys.